Happy Easter again. Picture for a moment, if you will, those horrific scenes of an atomic bomb going off. The big mushroom cloud and then the, the shock waves rolling out, taking out everything in their paths for miles and miles and miles. Now imagine the exact opposite. An explosion, but instead of the shock waves taking out and destroying things in its wake, it suddenly brings everything to life. As the waves roll through it, suddenly the dead branches come and start to bloom. People that were sick come alive in health. The moment of people in war and in hatred, they suddenly drop their weapons of hatred. If you can imagine that happening in every direction, in time and space, then you can begin to understand what happened on Easter morning when Jesus rose from the dead. Just picture, if you will, those who discovered the tomb, finding the, the shock of Jesus no longer being dead, the one they had just seen, hanging in the most ignominious, horrible death you could imagine, on a crucifixion by a Roman soldiers, and suddenly he's not dead anymore. But then picture that explosion of life going backwards into those who have died before. There is in Rome a basilica called San Clemente. San Clemente, when you walk in, is a 12th century basilica. But it was built on the, the ruins of a 4th century basilica, the medieval one replacing the one of the earliest church. And in the late 1800s, they discovered these, this basilica and started to excavate it. And suddenly you go back in time and you begin to see how the people in the fourth century would have prayed. The art, the frescoes on the wall. And there is one fresco that they discovered from the fourth century, called, which they now call the Herring of Hell. It pictures that moment when Jesus goes to waken those who have died before him. One can imagine him greeting his father, seeing uh, his father's eyes awaken to have him say, hello, dad. And then the picture, though, there in this fourth century basilica is the image of Jesus stepping on the head of Satan, who's trying to hold on to the ankle of Adam. And he's rescuing the one who brought sin into the world from death itself. This image of Jesus and Adam is not one uncommon in the earliest church. St. Paul begins the comparison between Adam and Jesus, what we now call typology, where you see a lesser image reflecting and predicting a greater one. In the fifth chapter of Romans, chapter 12, Paul says, just as sin entered the world through a man, referring to Adam. More clearly in, in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 21, he said, as death entered into the world through one man, so the resurrection of the dead entered through another man, Jesus. This idea of what we would see in the Old Testament in Adam reflected and fulfilled in the greatest way in Jesus, and the parallels line up in amazing way. The, the story of Adam takes place in a garden. The story of our salvation takes place, begins in the garden of Gethsemane. You see, the Adam ate the fruit, Adam and Eve ate the fruit of the forbidden tree because they thought they were told by the evil one that they could become gods man seeking to become God. Whereas in Jesus, we see God becoming man to save and find us. Another parallel is that the tree in the center of the garden is the place where the death enters the world. And as we heard in that reading today, that we hung Jesus upon a tree, suddenly the one tree is replaced, the tree of death is actually replaced by the tree of life. Another image that happens is, uh, that they discover is, the formation of Eve takes place when the Lord puts Adam into a deep sleep. 
And from his side he removes a rib, and from his side he builds up Eve. Well, it's in the sleep of death that Jesus is pierced in the side, and from his side comes water and blood, baptism and Eucharist. From his side comes his new bride, the church, into the world which we will bring the, the offspring of grace, not just biology, but of love and grace and faith. <clears throat> These parallels line up consistently. The challenging one is if you stop and think about the children of Adam and Eve. Cain and Abel, the first two children of Adam and Eve, were brothers who Cain murdered out of jealousy Adam. The effects of sin just pouring through history, fratricide brother turning against brother. And you say, oh, that's horrible, until you read the newspaper every single day and realize that this progeny of Adam has continued throughout all of human history. People turning to each other and saying, you don't exist, I decide that you don't exist. I don't, I decide that your life does not have meaning or worth. I hate myself so I can hate you. And then we ask ourselves, okay, the children of the bride born in, out of the side of Christ, those born into the world through baptism, are we of the ilk of Cain and Abel, or has Jesus Christ set us free? Has Jesus Christ set us free? Free from hatred, free from grudges, free from self-hatred, because he suddenly restores us to the dignity of sons and daughters of God himself, being part of Jesus Christ for all, and ultimately freeing us from, the, from death and the fear of death and all that comes with the fear of death. He has brought us into freedom to love most fully. The children of Ab Adam, are we, or the children of Jesus in the church? You see, the, the, the power of that shockwaves of the resurrection is now you and me transforming the world into and building the kingdom in the midst of all this chaos. Human rights to stand up for those who have no voice. You see, the, whether it be the unborn or the elderly and the ill, whether it be those on death row, the poor, the homeless, we must stand shoulder to shoulder with the immigrant to help them find their dignity and their worth and their place. This is part of the shockwave of who we're called to be, to stand up to a culture of death with a culture of life or a culture of love. That in fact, we now have the capacity to hate people that we disagree with. When in fact, if we're gonna be part of the shockwave of love, we can't cancel, we need to counsel. This is who we're called to be. And it's called and starts right now with my own life, with my own home, with my own family, with my own community here. The shockwave of the resurrection is what you and I are called to be part of. And it takes time to realize our dignity each day, to know the loving God so that we can share the loving God. My brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is truly risen. That fact is found in an empty tomb. But the shockwaves of those should waken not just Adam and Joseph and those who have gone before, but it should awaken us this day to let the power of love conquer all. And so my brothers and sisters, join me in this revolution. The shockwave of the resurrection, the shockwave of love and faith and hope. Praise be Jesus Christ.